So, you want to learn how to create a character for RP, or you can substitute it for roleplay, right? Well, here are the basics. So, I'm gonna bring this up over here. So, when you're in RP, most people will call the character creation of a character for roleplay as a skeleton. So, the skeleton is bare bones, it's for you to fill out. So right here at the first one we have name, alias, nickname, titles, sire, mortal age, actual age, species or race, bloodline, zodiac, sexuality, gender, family, abilities, haven, feeding, appearance, demeanor, nature, strengths and flaws, background history and then hobbies you can add or take away as many of these as you want this is just a general basis that i pulled off of a roleplay site that i'm usually on which is in the background and i'll bring that up here in a minute um but first off so you're probably wondering okay well that's you know obvious you know you want to add names all those kind of things well the main ones I have already starred for you, so if you don't want to add all of this, you don't have to. What you really need is a name, your age, or the age of your character, the race or species of your character, your character's sexuality, and I'll explain why later, your character's gender, and I'll explain why later, abilities, appearance, strength and weaknesses, and I'll explain why later, and history and background. So, as I said, I was going to explain later why you needed a race or a species, or why you need sexuality, or why you need gender. But first, we're going to go after age. Why do you need an age for your character? Well, in some cases, some people don't want to RP with characters that are a certain age. For example, some people don't want to RP with characters that are, less, let's say, 10. They don't, they don't want to do it. They don't want to get involved with characters that are age of 10. Whereas some people will RP with characters that are 20, 30, 40, 50, 40, 50, and so on. Um, this is, you don't get offended by it. Some people just don't want to RP with that kind of character type. And that's fine. That's why this is important. Race and species, race and species, spe species. Species, yeah, race and species, or whatever. This <laughs> right here is important for your character's dynamic. So you could say, okay, you want to be human, right? No, him. You want to be human, right? That's fine, All right? But you can't be this age and be human. That's not possible. That's illogical. Doesn't work. Okay, and if you wanted to do that that's fine you can do that right that's where these two come in handy okay so if you didn't add these two you'd have to change this to something like this this or this it'd have to be something supernatural but if you wanted to keep it as this that's perfectly fine you just have to go up here and adjust this so what do these two mean? Well, in the game, the site that I'm using to RP, Sire means somebody that's changed your character from human to vampire. That's usually what it's used for for vampires. Some people use it for werewolves, some people use it for liking, some people use it for something else. So this would be the name, let's just say, um, let's say, let's say Vlad. Let's say Vlad is the one that changed my character, right? Okay, so what age did you change the character? Well, let's say you changed my age 20, right? So, mortal age means the age of what you look like, right? The age that you were changed. This is generally, just generally means what your character generally looks like. That's what they're going to go by, right? So, Vlad changed, um, we'll just say, pro. We'll call him protagonist coon okay yeah there you go 
Vlad changed protagonist Kuhn at the age of 20 to be a vampire. Now, you don't have to change this. You don't. Because the person who reads your character's biography will see that they were changed at the age of 20, so their actual age is 300, but they stay human. Now, this, you don't have to change. It's you could you preferred you changed it, or if you didn't want to change it, you could do this, so that way people understand kind of what you are. But if you wanted to maintain your more humanly aspect, that's you would just leave it as human, but put this to help people understand better when they read your bio or bio or you know characters profile right so that that's why you want to have that okay well actually no we'll leave those just for just up there right so then we're gonna come down to sexuality this is really important because let's say your character is homosexual right so your character is homosexual okay now let's say you were male right these two go these two really go hand in hand so let's say you're male let's say your character is homosexual while some people will be perfectly okay with that they may not want their character to get involved for example let, let's just say let's say this is your character right but let's say a character that you're interacting with is heterosexual but they're also male so while your character may be interested in that person that person's character is not going to be interested in, in your character because they're not homosexual you shouldn't really get offended by this because it doesn't mean that they necessarily hate homosexuals or they're homophobic that just means that their character is not homosexual and that's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine to be heterosexual it's perfectly fine to be homosexual it's perfectly fine to be bisexual it's perfectly fine to be whatever it's just better if you put that on there so that way people know what kind of sexuality your character has so they don't you know so it doesn't come off as awkward later in other words, you you'll be able. So let's say let's say you were let's say your character was heterosexual, right? Let's say your character was heterosexual, and some other characters, some other person's character was homosexual, but you didn't know that. It didn't show that. So let's say you're so let's say you're male male character, and you're hitting on a female character that's actually homosexual. So I'm not interested in. in um, male characters so you're hitting on that character but they're not interested in your that kind of character type they're not interested in males and so you're like okay well that's fine you know most people you know will you know will, they will be chill about it all right they'll be chill okay you're not interested in me that's perfectly fine we can just be friends all right but maybe they want to know why maybe they want to know you know as the maybe the person behind the screen wants to know okay that's fine but why are you just not interested in males that's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine if somebody doesn't want to interact you know it's perfectly fine sexuality is perfectly fine no matter who it is no matter who they are behind the screen male female if a male wants to play female if a female wants to play male that's fine too it's just this is important so that way it can you don't it's a way of letting others know that hey you know i'm interested in male characters or hey i'm interested in female characters or hey i'm interested in whatever you know that's fine that's why your gender is important too so you can put you know he she they them you know that's fine too if you want to identify as that that's perfectly okay it's just it should it has to be there so that way they can address you as such in the uh, role play so let's say you want to be, let's say you, you just want to classify as them or they, right? Okay, well, this right here will help the person you're RPing with classify your character as them or they. So that way when they're, you know, typing in chat, so let's say, let's, let's do a real quick one. So let's say, let's take, you know, me as the role player's perspective into your perspective like i'm role playing with you so i'm gonna put he s walked up to them and said hello okay oh, hold on there we go okay so i put them in here so you can understand where that comes from now if your character was female You'd put he walked up to her or he walked up to him 
That way it just it helps clarify things so that way things will be smoother in the RP. That's why, you know, making things as detailed and as precise for your character as possible in your skeleton is to make things easier for both you and the person you're RPing with. So there's no confusion, there's no awkwardness, and it's also okay to ask questions. So if somebody asks you a question says, hey, uh, what's your character's gender? So let's say you put this, right? But they as one ask you, hey, what's your character's gender? Okay, don't don't get mad. Just refer to them and say, I'd prefer you just use my character's gender as them or they. And then if they're not okay with it, that's when you just move on and you don't worry about it. You don't talk to them. You don't RP with them because there are some people like that out there where they get really mad or offended about it. Don't worry about it. Just move on. You know it's gonna happen they're not they're you know few of those type of people there okay so we're gonna move on and we're gonna go ahead and erase everything now since it's not really relevant anymore so we're gonna keep our character known as just protagonist code all right um so now we've got those two out of the way abilities now you can be human, as I said. Let's say, let's just say you're human, and let's say you just stayed human, and you know you're 20, and you're 20, right? Okay, not 230. That is no. <laughs> you're 20. You're 20, right? Okay. So your abilities for a human can be as simple as you know. Let's say your human has some form of combat training, so you you can put CQC, right? Now, what I like to do when I do abilities is uh, make sub tabs for them so it's easier to understand. So you get a brief description of their CQC, which is close quarters combat. Okay, what are they? What's so good about their close quarters combat? Well, you could say, you know, they're a martial. Whoops, martial artist. Uh, okay, that doesn't really that doesn't help. Okay, so what kind of you know fighting style? You know, you could say, I don't tie on. Okay, I don't think I spelled it right. Yeah, I probably didn't spell it right. I'm probably like an idiot, right? But, you know, that's what, you know, Google is for to help you kind of get the words right. And you can, once you pretty much, you know, get the words right, you can go. Um, but let's say your character proficient as a martial artist in Taekwondo. Well, that kind of helps. Um, but when you do it like that and you put it in such a direct dynamic, you're going to want to be... Um, you're going to want to understand the basics of Taekwondo, the fundamentals, the style of it as a whole. You might want to watch videos. It It's so it helps your kit so you can allow so you don't mess up pretty much. So you're not using something that's not in your character's preset. Well, you could just leave it open, say martial artist. And that way you can leave it up to whatever. Or you can do what I do and say Street Fighter. That's what I do. It means they, you pretty much, you're street fighting, you pretty much picked up your skills on the street, you basics, you didn't do go through any military training or anything like that, everything's just street smarts. And that's fine. That just leaves it more open, it, ha it still has that dynamic, you know, maybe your character needs a cheap, cheap, you know, they'll use whatever means necessary, they'll pick up dirt, toss in somebody's face, you know, then you try and go in and punch them in the face. You know, that's fine. Um, but you also have to factor in your character's background so if your character has street smarts and street fighting your character has to come from a background where they picked up that so these two pretty much all so these three actually history flaw, uh, history flaws strengths and abilities all go in hand pretty much everything that i've outlined in stars is all pretty much going to connect and form the base the the ground level of your character so you don't even have the name doesn't have to be part of that it's mainly your age your modal age your actual age and your species your gender and sexuality have nothing to do with your abilities your uh yeah your abilities your your uh, strength flaws and your history so i should probably go ahead and put some other kind of we'll do it this way all right Make it easier for people so they understand. So that way, if you want to know. Okay, and we're going to go again. Alright. Yeah. So the ones that have the three stars 
are all connected. Alright. Hold on, I didn't add three stars. Okay. I only have three stars are all connected, okay? So your your character is human. Your character is human. Alright, H twenty, CQC. So look at a close quarter combat. So you can put Brawler as a strength. And then one of the flaw what is their flaw? Like you have to come up with a flaw though. So they're good at fighting, but what are they mad at? You could say flaws making friends. Okay. So let's do that. So let's say they're good at fighting, but they're bad at making friends. Now when you make your background history, you're gonna be you French gonna say it's it we'll just use pro protagonist coon grew up with grew up having grew up in the slums having to fight day in and day out in order to survive okay we'll just put lost family at young age right and so this is this right here it can this is pretty much um you could call it a low effort background you this is, we're just using this as a basic example so you know this kind of helps people understand where your character came from why they have these strengths why they have these flaws what their abilities came from how you know how they grew up and you know i guess i should have put this too because these Oh, we'll, I'll come back to this in a second. So, um, yes, your background history, your strengths and your flaws, and your abilities all tied together with your race, extra age, mortal age, and all that. Okay. Um, when I now when I was talking about the meteor nature, this if you say let's say you put super happy all the time right okay um let's just say you put super happy all the time for both of these okay so it means your character is always happy they're never mad or anything but that doesn't make sense or they're just too happy off to the mistake but that kind of it's kind of difficult to understand why they don't they're not able to make friends because they're happy all the time all right um most people find that weird it won't make sense now if you put uh brooding and cold well now that you know fits in better you know it's understandable why they're brooding and cold they lost the family at a young age they had to fight day in day out to survive you know you can put untrusting in nature and you know that explains why they're you know struggling to make friends okay so it's just these little things that you have to you know, it seems like a lot, but when you get the hang of it, it's actually fairly easy. Hang on, I'm trying not to erase certain things, because I'm going to go and explain them in a second. Okay. So I'll go ahead and actually, nah, I guess we'll leave them. Okay. So, when you do all that, so that's pretty much the basic ground of your character. You don't have to do all of these and let's say let's say for example you did so after you develop the basic basis of your character let's say you want to go ahead and you know give your character an alias let's say you name your character um chuck coon <laughs> uh yeah you can do that you can do a nickname senpai uh what's your title gonna be let's just say you know put some put some out there say main character right okay so you don't in fact, you don't even have to put the name. The name start it with the name. You can start anywhere you want on the skeleton. Some people, you know, have a hard time coming up with names, and that's okay. So you just skip over it and do something else. Let's say you didn't have a name. Let's say you knew what what your gender was. So let's say you're gonna put. Let's say you want to make a female. All right, that kind of helps. That kind of helps you come up with a name. Let's say you want to be a dragon. All right. So that helps, you know, you come up with, you come up with some cool um, dr dragon-like name, right? Um, 
Let's do... No, I, I am kind of bad at making moves myself. I don't really make characters stay to one. Um, so we're gonna, let's just say Shiva. Um, she's some terrible. Um, Baron. Sure, that's kind of a stupid name, but whatever. So Shiva Baron, right? And let's say you want to put an alias. Aliases can be anything that somebody like a code name so let's just say your code name is um blah uh man i don't even know um true code name line all right we'll go with that and then your nickname you can be anything, pretty much, you know, kind of a way for people to, certain characters, when they get familiar with the character, if, if you want them to call, they call your character by a certain nickname, we'll just say, um, Ava. You know, I mean, it's not the same thing as Shiva, but maybe they, you know, want to shorten it to Ava. That's fine. What kind of titles do you have? You know, this one could be like, you know, um, say you're... The Queen of Dragons, right? So that's your title. You're the Queen of Dragons. Um, now some other people may have, may also be the Queen of Dragons, and that's okay. The thing about these kind of things is that a character can be unique, but somebody else may have the same kind of concept that you have, and that's fine. Um, let's say you were born like that. So you'd put, you know, your mother and father's name. So just put mom and dad they, you can put that or you can put their actual names or just put mom and dad to make things easier let's say so your mortal age and your actual age are actually going to be the same um unless you want your character to look more human like so when they take on a humanoid form you can say you want them to look like they're 20 right but their actual age could be 9260 okay um just basis line bloodline um you can put you know this you can put your your last name of your character if your family bloodline that sort of thing zodiac obviously a zodiac sign you don't have to put that it's just like you don't have to put bloodline sire titles nickname alias you don't put any of that in there um let's say you're pansexual that's fine all right, and your family, this this tab right here, the families tab, could be, do you have any brothers, sisters, and get, you have any family that you created with a, uh, the other person, you know, like any, you know, mother, your mother, you got adopted, you know, that sort of thing, you put it all here. Um, abilities, you know, anything you want to add, take away, you know that sort of thing like we went over previously your dragon so obviously you got things like fire breath okay or um uh dragon morphing so that means or you can morph to and from dragon so you're not always in the state of a dragon that does help how people understand more about your character and then we can go over here to you know, Haven. Haven is pretty much what your character finds as like a safe place where they would go to pretty much relax, get away from every, all the stress. And some people put home, some people put, you know, forest, woods, lake, whatever. You can put whatever you want. Um, pretty. This, this kind of helps where, kind of helps you understand where you want your character to be, where your character would go, you know, that sort of thing. You can change, you can change it later, you you can have more than one, you know, to say you like being in the forest and you like, and lakes, right? So that's where, you know, your character will find peace at. Um, feeding, this can be, you could put anything, you can put, you know, likes, chocolate, hates, pineapples, right? So, I mean, it's just little things that help bring your character to life. So that we, you know, just anything, pretty much anything you, to help bring your character to life. Um, parents, now, when I said sub-tabs, 
like for blood and such. I like to put parents into a multi-tab. Um, actually, I'll go down there and show you on my personal characters, uh, um, skeleton, what I mean. But uh, basics could be so my use of types. I'll do this, and then I'll do uh, something like hair color, eye color, um, height. Oh, hang on height and so on and so forth etc all right so let's say you do that okay it helps the person who's looking over your profile come to picture their character better because some some sites or you know whatever say you're doing it on discord and you don't want to upload a picture okay that's fine you don't have to right um, I uploaded a picture for my character and I change his appearance, you know, every so often. Uh, and that's mainly because of one of his abilities that allows him to do that. And you can have an ability for a character that does that. It's able to, you know, shape shift. And, you know, that, that's cool. That's fine. Um, so then, I'll show you in a second. Um, demeanor and nature. Now, demeanor and nature uh, go hand in hand, but they're also different. A demeanor is how your character will act on the out well ah, see they're, they're different but they're the same so nature is more easier to explain it's pretty much how your character is going to act out out outwards you know socially with people around them you know how they're going to treat other people how they're going to view the world society that sort of thing uh demeanor is more of like um inward inward conflict how they view things on the inside but they these two tie together so if you have a person that's untrusting and rude but they were loving and caring it's going to be kind of weird your character is pretty much going to be uh mentally unstable and that's fine you could do that you can make a mentally unstable character but you have to sh explain how that came to and your history and your background and then you're also going to want to say that's one of the strengths and flaws is your character is pretty much mentally unstable um so generally what people do and let's say your character is by nature loving and caring all right so then your demeanor can be something as simple as this kindness that means they you know kindness and compassion now those two go hand in hand that makes sense you know they work well all right, but let's say because of that, you have a flaw that's untrusting. So your strength would be um, cheerful, and a f and your flaw would be um, you get misguided. So people could use you, that kind of thing. Um, necessarily, you can but see the thing about that is that because your character is so old you can't there's a way you don't have to have that flaw if your character was like young in your backstory you said that they grew up you know spoiled generally um not spoiled but like nurtured generally you would have that misguided flaw it makes sense because it's understandable why it's there um, it's still understandable why it's there if you wanted to put it for somebody who's like 9,260 years old. When you think about that, your actual age, you kind of have to take into factor of your character, how wise your character is. See, because 9,260 years, I mean, yeah, 9,260 years is a long time to live. So they've had so much time to accumulate knowledge and wisdom and so you could have that your character could be um super intelligent right or your character could see a liar simply through their actions through their words and it's understandable because i've all older characters these kind these sorts of things help your um the reason you want to have so much on your skeleton on your skeleton when you make your character's profile is because it helps others understand more about your character when they read your profile and like for example let's say you can detect somebody your character detects somebody lying you know they're lying because you're obviously reading it but your character may not 
but your character is able to detect the deceive the deceivement from the other character because of how and you could say because of how old they are you could literally put for example Shiva was able to see through the woman's lies simply because of her experience with li with liars all right so you can have that let's say you're writing something and you can tell and your character is able to see through that and you can say with the way you back it up is this part right here experience with liars where did that experience come from your age your character's age that kind of thing or let's say let's change it up let's say your character is not a dragon so it's, we're gonna go and leave the rest as is and say so your character is actually human right so ignore this but we're gonna leave the name ignore pretty much your title i mean you can be human be queen of dragons whatever all right let's just say your character is human normal right okay so your character's you know experience with liars okay that's where you can go and you can you have your strengths and your flaws you can put strength perceptive all right and you can put ability able to see through lies all right so your strength is your perceptive and your abilities that you're able to see through lies so your background you you could put something so let's say you're working in your background and then one of the things in your background could be has been betrayed many times so these while it does require more work these things right here these for strength you, you know your perception your um your abilities your background history all tie into this one phrase experience with liars that's how you're able to detect this whole, detect the one was lying um or how your character was anyways right so it's just you know those kinds of things that you know help build your character and it can be hard it can be time consuming if you're not used to making characters or if you want to make a certain type of character um and that's what i'm about to show you on my profile i didn't make now i'm gonna let you know i did not make this character in a day this character i have made over years and years ever since i was you know probably in middle school at the last i can remember i just remember i used to you know do kind of rp on skype you know use skype uh, messaging system i used to actually use aol too as a messaging system for rp um but so i'm gonna show you i'm gonna minimize that and i'm gonna show you my character right so this is my character obviously you know raku von rosario if you're watching the eighth sin series um you know, that name will seem familiar his his uh alias is phenomenal glitch and that's going to be down in his history i'm not going to obviously read the, the whole history it's really long um but you can if you want to come and you know look at my characters through this uh link right here i might put that in the description or not um but just if you do you have to sign up make an account which is just you know email account i believe i think it's just when i did it was email account uh username which is going to be this which you can change an account and password um and it's a pretty general site it's not just rp there's a whole other thing that you can do chat if you just want to get come and chill get to know people anyways back to what i was saying um tight nicknames now when i just had these put whatever people used to call him so these are the things people used to call him. Um, he has more titles, but I just put the one that you know fits him the most as of right now. The eight sin who defies logic, destiny, and fate, because that's the most uh, title. That's the most fitting title for him at the moment. His actual age. The reason his actual age is not known is simply because of his sire, which is pre-post apocalypse. So if you know anything about, if you've known obviously apocalypse uh, if you know anything about the book of genesis you know the bible all that kind of thing you don't understand that uh the apocalypse is when the uh riders ride and so that's either 
before the world came to an end or after the world's coming to an end. That's why it's pre-post. Um, his mortal age, he always looks like he's 21. Um, so I have this picture here. And that'll go back to appearance down there. You can ignore that though for right now. Uh, species, um, he is the eighth sin. So his species, the eighth sin, I used to be human. And then I changed it to demon. Then I changed it to a reaper. And then I changed it to um, a digital entity. And now he's the eighth sin, right? Um, and if you want to know more about what the eighth sin actually is, you can actually Google it. There's a whole backstory concept to it. That way you can understand a little bit more about what it is and that sort of thing. Um, so we're gonna go to Bloodline. He's a relic of the ancient, which kind of which makes sense because of uh, when he was born. I put his zodiac, which is Gemini, and you don't have to put in parentheses the day of the birth, but you can. Um, his sexuality is heterosexual. He's he's into women. His gender is male, obviously. And this is this is only for pretty much this site. They have categories. He is a main character. Um, you could have this in your bio if you want to or not. Um, he has a family. I did I did also have a wife for him at one time. Um, that sort of thing. His actual family, if you want to know, slaughtered. There's I have a series, a book series on him. Uh, the first one, yeah. The first one uh, you can find a web novel. I'm working on the second one, but that's pretty much what happened. Um, now this whole all this text that you. Hang on. All this text that you see right here is his abilities. All of it used to simply be um I think it was this. So it used to simply be just this all of these, um, in a more dumbed down version where I just put shadow you know, shadow manipulation, um and I didn't used to have a description of how it works. If you had, this is what I mean by tabs. So let's say you have the, yeah, it's really long. Um, so you have the abilities tab, right? And yeah, you want to have multiple abilities for your character. That's fine. So let's say, as for him, I have shadow arts. I changed it pretty much from shadow manipulation to shadow arts. And I put... Um, Raikou was born with this unique ability to, manipula to manipulate the shadow with his mind. With his mind, he's capable of doing the following. So I pretty much made a tab in a tab. So when I do that, I use the uh, squiggly line. I can't remember the key for it is, and then I use just a normal line. And so I use a semicolon for the main tab. Then I do a sub tab. And if I don't want, to, if I don't have any sub tab further than that, then I'll just use the normal line. But if I have a further sub tab, so you have sub tab sim, uh, squiggly line, then you have further sub tab for that kind of ability as going to be uh, just regular line. And then you can go in and explain your ability. So I have shadow clone, shadow projectile, stalker, shadow step, you know, and it goes further and further. Um, there's that sort of thing, and pretty much this character is combat orientated. So I have uh, active skills, which explains when you know when the skills activated, cooldown, charge time, all that kind of thing. So we're gonna just skip past this because it's a lot, and I'm not gonna read it. And we're gonna go to Haven. So like I said, you could put wooden forest, or you could put a little bit more detail into it. He likes to take to his studies and research more than anything else, but does not mind the casual conversation converse with the populace. In addition to that, he loves his time alone during walks, but may sometimes partake in night activities. We all know what night activities are. Come on now. If you if you're reading this, you're old enough to know what night activities are. <laughs> Anyways, so that's his haven. Uh, his feeding he, uh, Raikou does not have the desire to eat, nor does he need to. He can still taste, but regardless of the fact, he enjoys fruit the best. So, pretty much, in other words, it pretty much means my character doesn't have any hunger pains. He doesn't need nutrients, and that it wasn't always like that. It used to be something else, but it you can always... The thing about your character profile is that you can always adjust it and morph it to how you want and how you see fit. Your character is never stagnant. And I'll show you what I mean when I as I go down. So this area looks. So obviously I could put more, but I you know didn't. 
Um, so I have height, weight, uh, and I like to, if, you know, I changed his looks, I like to kind of put former, and of course I have these two things, which, because he did die. Um, so I have a former, then I have a, uh, hold on, yeah. Hair, eye colors, hair color, former, and then, you know, former attire, you know, if you don't, if you want, if you're using a picture and you don't want to put, um, pretty if you want to do it lazily, you can put attire in the picture. So clothing, if you want, if you're not using a picture and you want your character to have, have some sort of unique, uh, basic clothing, you can put it in, uh, clothing. You can do the articles, you, you could say head, you could put earrings, that sort of thing. You can do all that, right? And now, um, you go further down, you can put tattoos, he has a tattoo, he has markings and tribal marks, his voice, just some what people really taught, what people um, said about his voice, obviously I can't, you know, I'm not really good for his voice in the uh, YouTube series I'm making, but I mean, that's the best I can, I don't have anyone to voice over it. <laughs> um, so here I did his demeanor and nature, and this is what I mean by go hand in hand. So we'll start off with nature first. Back when he was known as the Dark Demonic Reaper, he was a cold ruthless killer and showed it. It was in his nature to be the Grim Reaper, even though it was still even though some of that still lingers he tries to be a true gentleman nowadays. So that pretty much means he is ruthless but kind in a sense. Now we'll go up to Demeter. Most would see him as a dark person who kills for the fun and torments all, though the truth is he's similar to an anteater, which kind of goes hand in hand. Um, I haven't updated these two in a long time. Right now it's he's more towards the uh, gentleman kindness person, but he'll pretty much do what needs to be done when the time comes. So I guess that kind of still, it still rings true to his the anti-hero thing. Um, so I have flaws. Um, so these are all his flaws. Um, it you know kind of helps to understand. Flaws make your character come to life. It just me makes it seem like your character is not some super being that is immune to everything because nobody is. It, it, flaws can be anything from you know being a cripple to being mentally unstable to you know having traumas that sort of thing. So you know maybe some of the strengths can lead into flaws, and that's what the first one is. His powers can apprehend him and make him weak. Most of his powers consume his blood, which drains his strength. Um, that was back then. Some of it still does now, but um, it's not how it is now, and that's because he has a uh, flux body, which is a pretty much a system. Um, so it consumes EMP or mana, if you will. Um, another thing is this attitude. He is cocky and will sometimes underestimate his opponent. When he does, when he, does he leaves himself open. Um, this flaw still somewhat rings true, but not as much nowadays because of all the experience he's gained. So he doesn't really underestimate as many people, but it's, he still kind of does. Um, and then, you know, trauma from when his wife died. Um, so he blames himself for that, and he feels massive guilt. Well, then I have his history, the beginning, the middle, and the end, after story, virtual space, transcending new heights, the oath of rebellion, great digital wonder, um, one foot on the ground, phase unknown, just pretty much, you can add more to your character's history as you go, as you build your character, and that's what I mean by your character is never stagnant. Your character is alive. The more you add to your character and put into your character, the more your character feels like an actual person. And that's what makes our that's what enrich, can enrich a roleplay is the amount of uh, heart I wanted. I would say you put into your character, which you add into it. Um, it does. You don't have to make some super long history biography right off the bat. I didn't. When I made, first made him, he had about. Jeez, not this much. She had like maybe a paragraph or two. And now, you know, now he has all of this. And that was over years of work. Um, and, you know, you don't, maybe you don't want a character that you want to use as like over years of work. That's okay. You don't have to have that kind of character. Um, but, you know, it's just these little things. So you can have a character that, you know, maybe your character, you know, has a certain religion. My character doesn't have religion. Um, if your character does certain work, um, he used to work as a bartender, um, before returning to pretty much, you know, where the site is, 
pretty much one of the cities that you know pertains to the site um he has hobbies he pretty much likes to obtain he likes to obtain information on the unknown he says the more knowledge one possesses the more of an advantage they have in life as well as combat which you know can be true um i did have an open-ended question because you know some people did in the past question me about you know Grim reaper or dark lord death satan that sort of thing uh, how i put in my biography that he pretty much imprisoned them killed them whatever and some people were like well that's not you know i you didn't do that i'm the, i'm the dark lord i'm satan or i'm the Grim reaper and that's where the whole um somebody got the same concept of you comes in that's why i say it's perfectly fine as long as you understand that somebody else may have the same concept as you all right and i understand that um i have a whole you know additional things combat aid to help people understand when i'm doing combat with them um status to help people you know grasp what what kind of the stats are and then other things and then i have my own personal note down here um that can only really be seen by me but it pretty much says Raikou is still and always will be a work in progress, meaning my character is never done. He never will be. Um, and on the site, people can rate your characters. I have pretty much an overall good rating, almost 10 out of 10. Um, I'm actually glad about that. I'm actually glad that people find my character really interesting to the point that they would do that kind of thing, um, that they would rate him as 10. But that's pretty much how you would pretty much you know, create a character um in another video i'll go more in depth into sub tab some of the uh sub tabs on here like you know alias nickname title sire um maybe more in depth to abilities more in depth to strength and flaws and background and history you know just you know a separate video to go in depth of that it probably won't be as long as this one but you know, just shorter um you know, and I'll have whole host to uh, tutorials bleh, on how to, you know, become a better RPer. Because some people will just, you know, the RP like this. He laughed at her. And, you know, that's boring. <laughs> when, you, when you read something, you don't want to read just that. See, uh, yeah. It's, you know, you know, I'll host tutorials on how to, you know, help you help people that may come to the site and find, I mean, come to this video and find, you know, click on it, find that this is here. Maybe it'll help them build their character a little bit more, add more things in, in there that they may have not, you know, thought of. They'd be like, oh, OK, that kind of makes sense. That helps me build my character, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, I'll just go ahead and make videos on how to help people become better uh, role players, better at grasping the concept of role play, adding more depth to it, creating more paragraphs, you know, making it more better for both themselves and the person they're role playing with, so that way they don't become boring and stagnant and they don't be dropped. But that'll be all for this video, this whole tutorial. Um, I'll, oops, I'll see y'all next time in the next video. Bye! Hey everyone, this is Post Commentary here for, for my video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop some in the comments below. If you like the video, please give it a like and feel free to subscribe. Alrighty, I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.